untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at an Abzan Humans deck, which is primarily white, but splashing black mainly for General Kudro, which not only pumps our team, but also gives us some main deck Graveyard Hate, which is quite valuable in a metagame filled with Grease Fang Parhelion decks, and then we can even use it as removal in the late game. And then I'm also playing one copy of Kitesail Freebooter in black, to sort of complement our anti-combo and control card, which is mainly Thalia, making non-creature spells a one more expensive, Freebooter can maybe take a look at the opponent's hand and take away a non-land, non-creature card. And then we're playing green, mainly for Collected Company as a powerful curve topper in any creature deck, but especially this one with so many powerful 3-drops we can hit with it. And then we're also playing one copy of Catilda, Dawnheart Prime, which can maybe give us a nice mana boost and potentially pump the team as well in the late game. Then looking at the rest of our deck, some of our key cards include our three copies of Adlin as a powerful creature that can make 1-1 one, one humans when our creatures attack and power equal to the number of creatures we control can very quickly get out of hand and also synergizes very nicely with Thalia's Lieutenant, putting plus one counters on all our other humans when it enters a battlefield and whenever another human enters afterwards, the Lieutenant itself will pick up a plus one plus one counter. So this can be great with all the tokens from Adlin, not only pumping existing tokens, but then when we attack and generate another 1-1, one, one, our lieutenant will also pick up an extra counter. And then we've got Aspirant as another powerful 2-drop, getting to put a counter on one of our creatures each turn. And at 3 mana we've got some main deck removal with Brutal Cathar, which is also nice to have in a creature deck, which otherwise doesn't want to play a lot of non-creature spells, so we still have a bit of interaction. And then I'm also trying out two copies of Extraction Specialist, which has a few neat synergies throughout the deck. Of course, getting back any of our powerful 2-drops is great, especially when some of our creatures like Aspirant don't need to be attacking or blocking to be useful. And same for Thalia, Lieutenant, and the Freebooter that both have nice Enter the Battlefield abilities. Even Catilda can still tap our creatures for mana. And then some of our 1-drops include Inspector, which also has a nice ETB effect we can maybe reuse. And the Bodyguard is also great with our Specialist, as we can maybe sacrifice it and then bring it back, protecting our most valuable creature to make it indestructible. And then another 1-drop includes Hopeful Initiate, which can also be trained quite easily thanks to all the other plus 1 counters, and can also take out artifacts or enchantments. So we've got all our angles covered here with anti-combo control cards, we've got anti-artifacts and enchantments, and some creature removal as well. So the deck is quite well-rounded despite being an all-creature deck. And then the mana base works thanks to the addition of Secluded Courtyard, which in addition to our unclaimed territory can make one color of any mana when it comes to casting our humans, so that there's no problem with casting a white 1-drop, followed by maybe a green-white or black 2-drop, and then maybe double-white or black-white on turn 3. And then we do need some actual green sources to cast our collected company, so we've got four Temple Garden, four Green-White Pathway, a basic forest in case of Field of Ruin, forest is probably more important than planes, so we can still cast our collected company in case the opponent is trying to take us off green mana, and then a black-green pathway can fix for both black and green, and then a courtyard, a nice fast land in an aggro deck like this one. So plenty of mana fixing to go around, two farmlands as well. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand, just needs land number three, and we're off to a nice start. Probably gonna lead with Aspirants, and there's our land, perfect. Against a red deck, I think I still want to put counter on Aspirant itself, so next turn we can actually train the initiates. But there is a chance that our opponent has like a 2 damage stomp and we're better off putting counter on initiate. Ooh, a cleansing wildfire. Okay. So land destruction, only have the one forest, so hopefully they don't play another. But for now we can get some damage in. And we have to decide between Adlin and Kudro. Probably go for Adlin. And then next turn, Lieutenant, even if they destroy a land, is still going to be quite effective. And then Aspirant can put counter on itself, if we'd like. Or we can put one on Adlin to make it even more difficult for the opponent to kill her. Let's go for Aspirant. Train Initiates, make a token. And yeah, our opponent's already staring down lethal here. 
and her opponent packs it in, next turn either Lieutenant or Kudro would have been more than enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, hand seems fine. Turn to Aspirant into maybe an Adlin. Got good mana, which can cast company as well. Facing the mirror match. Thalia, luckily not too impactful. Although it's gonna delay our company by a turn, but it's also gonna apply to the opponent's company. Opponent's got her own Aspirants. Probably see counter on Thalia to discourage any attacks, although now we can attack back and enable Adeline, which is quite valuable. And then probably still counter on Aspirant itself, since if they have Brutal Cathar, Adeline is probably equally valuable at this point. Upside of counter on Adeline, I guess, is it blocks Thalia. Opponent playing a version with Pack Leader, another Aspirant. Okay. It's a pretty fair fight. Makes a 5 5 Pack Leader. So we have options. We could play a Bodyguard protecting Adlin and then still attack with her. Do I want to play General Kudro or do we want to play something else? If the plan is Bodyguard, then of course Kudro is the most mana efficient play. Or we can just double 2-drop, which is also quite reasonable. Kind of liking the Bodyguard on Adlin play. And our opponent concedes, yeah, I guess that's good enough already. Get to attack for a whole bunch and then force the opponent to chum block maybe. And next turn with a Lieutenant we can go over the top onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand could use a few extra lanes, but uh, seems functional. Can uh, potentially take a look at the opponent's hand if they're on a combo or control deck. If not, we can start beating down with plus one counters. And our opponent does appear to be blue-white. So, I think I would prefer to get my Aspirant countered than Freebooter, since Freebooter can maybe take away a Sweeper, which is more difficult for us to deal with. And they might have a Sensor here, which next turn we can pay for. So, Aspirant resolves. Opponent maybe holding a spot removal spell or a neutralize, which they'll cycle. Okay. Well, company is definitely an important tool in the matchup. For now, could attack first and then freebooter, since I'm unlikely to put the counter on it. One's gonna counter it. Alright. So we don't have any information about their hands. Hopefully we draw land number four so we can collect it company. It's initiate instead. So we could go initiate into lieutenants. Although it doesn't play quite as well into a potential sweeper. Although if I go Kudro and they have a wandering emperor instead, exiling aspirants, then I would probably rather have the two extra creatures. So we'll try that. And then Aspirant can also maybe put its counters somewhere else. So a Wandering Emperor isn't quite as devastating. And then probably put it on the Lieutenant, which we'll get to pump next turn if we play Kudro. So it can train Initiate. Could also decide not to attack if we want to play around Wandering Emperor, but then if our opponent has a Memory Deluge to draw instead, we also fall behind, so it's a close call, but we'll uh, make them use it here. Alright, that worked. Opponents looking at their Field of Ruin. Can grab our one basic. And I guess now we cannot cast General Kudro, as we have two green sources. And it's going to be a Shatter the Sky, at least we'll draw. 
and really need another land here since we cannot even play Adeline right now. There we go. Although now I'm more in favor of playing Company and I probably should main phase it. In case of more counter spells we could also hit a Thalia to mess up the opponents. And sorry, not the best hit, but I'll take it. And now we've got a bigger board to benefit from our various anthem effects. The fairy. Gonna plus. So they have three mana available. Land was a great draw, so now we can double spell and potentially take out Teferi through a counter. Or I guess we're already threatening to kill Teferi on board, but uh, what's next? Maybe lead with Kudro, get that countered, and then play Lieutenant. Possible they have a spot removal spell, they can maybe try and save Teferi that way. And we can exile some of their spells here. Well, I don't think we're playing around another sweeper at this point. That works. Okay, so where does Aspirin put its counter? Probably on the Brutal Cathar, since if her opponent does have removal, I would rather keep my Aspirin, but both at the ferry. And Iganjo kills Aspirin, at least the ferry down. So I guess Agancho specifically was a reason to put the counter elsewhere, but that's okay. And given that they used Agancho and lost the fairy anyway, probably implies they don't have a sweeper, otherwise they just let it happen and keep Agancho in hand. They do have a hall to potentially block with next turn, but for now it looks like Adlin plus Initiates. And want to main phase this, so we grow the Lieutenant. And if they counter Adlin, they may not have a Wandering Emperor to exile one of our tapped creatures. Probably wanted to go for Neutralize on the off chance her opponent's playing Torrential Gear Hulk. Alright, turn the team sideways. Opponent with a Fateful Absence. Good thing we have a backup Kudro. Still hit for what is essentially 10 damage here after getting a token and pumping a lieutenant. Their opponent's at 3. So they need to top deck a sweeper since we know they didn't have one last turn. Just a tapped jewelry disruption. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Humans prevailing over blue white control. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems acceptable. Aspirant into hopefully Adeline. If they kill Aspirant, we can get it back. And we've got the mana to cast a collected company if we find any land. Ooh. Catilda's interesting. Is it better than turn to Aspirant? It might be. As it enables us to maybe cast a company next turn already. Although Adeline next turn is honestly quite good as well. Yeah, maybe I can see the advantage of playing Catilda once we already have a few humans in play. So we can essentially uh, tamp them for mana right away and potentially have a more efficient turn. Alright, bishops, your opponent on an angel's deck, which can be kind of a tough matchup if her opponent goes off here. For now, we can Adlin and smash, although their opponent gets to eat to 1-1, one, one, or I guess soak up 3 damage. Or we can play Catilda into lieutenants and pump our team a bunch, which is also quite tempting. And then next turn we can company. No, let's still go for Adlin. We either get to keep an extra 1-1 one, one or get in some damage. Which sounds fine. Alright, get to keep our 1-1. One, one, which is quite nice alongside Catilda. Opponent with a Righteous Valkyrie, so yeah, they have a Resplendent Angel on top here. Things could get rough. So now is maybe a good turn for Catilda into Collected Company. And hope to hit like a Brutal Cathar. And then we can still attack with Adeline. That seems fine. Although we have to be careful with how we tap our mana. And 
And yeah, we hit a Brutal Cathar and Freebooter could maybe snipe an opposing company versus Lieutenant just pumping our team, which is guaranteed to be effective. So actually a tough choice. We of course have another Lieutenant in hand. There's also something to be said for just having a Flyer in play. So maybe we do go for Freebooter, see if they have a company in hand, and then Cathar exiles Valkyrie. Alright, no company, so I guess that's both good and bad in a way. And then we can pump maybe our Freebooter for next turn, sure. Opponent takes 7. And another Valkyrie. Okay, Bodyguard can protect one of our key creatures. So, also potentially a combo with our Specialist. Also have the option of pumping our team with Katilda, but for now it's probably better to commit more creatures to the board. So we can play Bodyguard into Lieutenants. Bodyguard protecting probably Adlin. Play Lieutenants. Nothing to get back with the Specialist at the moment. And then we can pump maybe Katilda so we can attack with everyone. Spread out our damage, although then they could double block Brutal Cathar and kill it, so let's pump Brutal Cathar instead. And then what happens if we attack with everyone? They could eat Katilda and take a ton of damage. Having Katilda to activate next turn could be nice. So maybe we'll attack like so. And I could still play a second main specialist if I'd like. Opponent gets to eat a 1 1 and a 2 2. And go to minus 1, so probably not the correct blocks, but our opponent seemed pretty far behind. Sweet, on to the next one. Get to level up as well. Alright, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? It's missing a 2 drop, which is a big deal, but we have Bodyguard to maybe enable Adlin. Bodyguard, also a decent combo with Specialist. So, yeah, ideally we find a 2 drop, but I think it's still a keep. Opponents on a life gain deck with Veteran. And that's a nice 2 drop, so. Good draw. Lieutenant also great combo with Adlin. So play this on green so we can potentially cast company and then our mana should be sorted. Next turn Kudra pump the team. Opponent's already at 10. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, nice start from the human's deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand's a little bit land heavy, but starting initiate into Thalia is pretty decent. So if we find any good 3 drop, we're in business. I'll try it. And then probably fine to play a pathway here. We've got all our colors facing turn one duress. Okay, that's gonna miss. Thought Seize would have been a lot more effective. Play Thalia. And next turn Bodyguard can maybe protect Thalia as well. Brutal Cathar to answer creatures. Okay, so we're off to a nice start. Trespasser, perfect target for Brutal Cathar.
and attack. Could use a three-powered creature here to enable training or any anthem effect at this point. Although our opponent may be enough behind on board, that uh, will be fine. Okay, Bone Crusher might stabilize them somewhat. Opponent back up to 8. And just a land the draw. So what happens if we attack with a team? We get in for 6 and lose a creature. Yeah, it's not ideal. If we had one more good card here, it probably would have been game over, but uh, as is, might still be worth it to attack and put them low enough, since we don't have much else going on. Put on blocks Thalia. I think we let damage happen, because if I sack Bodyguard to protect Thalia, we lose out on 2 damage. And while Thalia could be relevant, how many more removal spells can the opponent have? So good block from them, and we'll keep Courtyard in hand. I guess it also transforms to Knight, so that can maybe gain even more life. But they are at 2, so can they find a way out? Holding Courtyard also relevant if we draw another Brutal Cathar. Opponent stays back, and Adlin was a great draw, so play that, and see if they let us move to combat. They can block with Hive, potentially. Worst case scenario, they have multiple spot removal spells. So our opponent lets us move to combat, so we'll get to make a 1-1 from Adlin if we attack with all. But yeah, the worst case would be your opponent having two instant speed removal spells, let's say double Fatal Push, or Stomp plus Fatal Push. Kills two of my attackers, blocks a third, only the 1-1 one -one gets in. And then we're left with basically just an Adlin and maybe a 1-1 one -one token, which is not an enviable position. Opponent did not play Bone Crusher. I guess if they had double Fatal Push, they would have played Bone Crusher. So it has to be something else. And what could it be? A red-black mid-range. Maybe they have two two-mana removal spells, although... Yeah, can't really think of what that might be. Infernal Grasp costs 2 life, so doesn't leave a ton of options. Yeah, I think we still go for it. Because if they're holding multiple stomps, those don't kill initiates. So I feel like attacking is fine. Alright, and a braid. I guess not on the list of cards I was necessarily playing around. So then they must have another stomp here as well. Opponent blocks initiates. And yeah, that's a stomp. At least we can sack bodyguard to fizzle the creature here. But that was the worst case scenario, opponent having two instant speed removal spells. Although, yeah, I'm not sure where the game would have progressed if we just pass a turn. They can still kill two creatures. And then uh, add some Bone Crushers to the board. So gotta hope for a lucky collected company, basically. Glory Bringer, ouch. And our opponent's gonna turn Graveyard Glutton sideways to gain some life. And take out Adlin. So now we pretty much need a company to have a shot. Aspirant almost does it. Can put him to one. And a Chandra. Can kill Aspirants. The and then they can attack back. Go back up to three, but then we have a lot of anthems that can win us the game between Lieutenants, Kudro. Aspirants, another Adlin, and company. Still just a land. Alright, that's too bad. Close game. And uh, yeah, not sure how this game would have worked out if we don't attack that turn, because Glorybringer's still coming, killing Adlin, so. Just 
GG's. Oh, this is gonna hurt. All right. And the glutton, yeah, I'm doing a lot of work. If it didn't transform tonight, then uh, that could have also made the difference. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand a little bit conflicted with Thalia and then double collected company. Only two lands, and we don't get to curve initiate into a two drop. Also don't have black mana for freebooters, so I think that's enough strikes against it that I should mulligan. This is better. And then we are kind of far from casting company, so maybe that should go as we've got some good two and three mana plays lined up. Turn to might go for Aspirant if we suspect a combo deck. Might be better to Freebooter. Looks like maybe a Parhelion combo deck, although cannot take Grease Fang with a Freebooter. So let's see, how does a mana work out? I guess next turn we could still play a 2 drop plus 1 drop if we play this on white. So that's not a concern. So yeah, close call. Don't hate Freebooter now, just to have a look, maybe take away some removal. See what we're working with. Okay, Salvage, Parhelion, Double Chariots. So taking Parhelion means they won't be able to maybe discard it to then reanimate. Although Chariot's the more immediate threat, although they have two of them. What if we just take Grizzly Salvage? They may not hit their fourth land right away. They may not mill Parhelion with it, or find, I guess, even uh, Grease Fang, because then they have can't stay away to bring it back. So maybe that's just the answer here. Instead of taking a redundant Chariot. And Inspector can attack. Don't really want him to trade, since we can easily pump it twice to attack past Shaman. And opponent found a Thought Seize now. But we'll still have a pretty efficient turn, and General Kudro is probably what they'll take, as that's built-in Graveyard Hate in the matchup. One of our best cards, actually. Although for now they're just going to be on the fair Chariot plan as opposed to the Grease Fang Reanimator plan. Either way. Aspirants probably pumping Inspector here. And then a 2-3 lines up well against the cat tokens. Can maybe use the initiate as well to blow up certain um, artifacts or enchantments. Opponent found Grease Fang, so if they find a way to discard Parhelion now we're in trouble. Let's see, can start by sacrificing the token. See what we draw. And then Lieutenant looks okay. Could have also kept a mana for the Initiate's ability. So now Lieutenants should enable some better attacks. So let's see if I put counter on Freebooter. We get to train Initiates. Or I can put counter on Aspirant itself, but then it still trades for Shaman. Which I probably don't want. So we'll put it on the Freebooter. And then these all attack. And then now we could maybe just pass a turn with the Initiate's ability up to prevent any shenanigans. Opponent's land comes into play tapped, and yeah, they're just too far behind. So yeah, having some tools against graveyard decks between Thalia making non-creatures more expensive, we've got the addition of Freebooter to have a look, and then General Kudro, definitely a great reason to splash black, not only for the Anthem but also the built-in graveyard hate. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Our hand seems pretty decent. Bodyguard into Thalia. And then maybe Adlin on three. Plays very well with Thalia's lieutenant. Turn one Swamp. And 
And hit for two. Opponent mono black so far with an Aetherborn. Okay. So now do I still want to play Adlin or do we play Initiate into Lieutenants? That way we get to attack with a team. Yeah, that feels a bit better. Could actually consider going Lieutenant into Initiate, so the Lieutenants will be a 2-2, although next turn I guess it grows twice from Adlin. So Initiate into Lieutenant still seems better. And then I'm fine trading Bodyguard for Aetherborn. And then next turn Adlin grows Lieutenant up to a 2-2, we attack, make a token, Lieutenant a 3-3, and uh, we'll be on our way. Thirst kills Thalia, and a Thoughtseize, that's too bad. Now we lose Adeline, and it's most of our plan here. But we can get lucky and top deck some goodies, like another Adeline. Okay, can't Thoughtseize the top of your deck, as they say. So, turn the team sideways, get to train initiate and grow lieutenants. So they'll probably end up blocking the 1-1 one -one to just gain two. Alright, opponent trades, that's fine. Okay. Hope to dodge a sweeper. And our opponent explodes, awesome. Lucky Adlin off the top. So yeah, we got to see our Amazon Humans deck in action, and it doesn't hold any punches. If you get to curve out and maybe top off your curve with a nice collected company, it's pretty hard for the opponents to recover, and the deck has enough interaction and other utility that it's not a pure creature aggro deck. It does offer some other tools as well, which is always appreciated. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.